Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. And uh, let's start this short talk. I'm going to try to cut to the chase and make it pretty straightforward today. Corn is a very valuable crop, makes lots of money. We eat lots of food. It feeds cows. Corn feeds people. But there are pests like caterpillars that'll eat corn, and everywhere from the corn roots up to the corn the leaves and the corn kernels themselves. So how do you kill pests? And if you look at that, you know, traditionally agriculture has, has uh, in the United States, certainly has depended heavily on pesticides. So, you know, I'm underlining some of these things. We've used pesticides um, on crops and things like pyrethroids, and we spray those pesticides to kill all the insects. The problem is, number one, you've got runoff that goes into streams and rivers of pesticides, which isn't good for the other organisms. Two, you got workers in the agricultural field they are going to be exposed to that. And three, you've kind of sprayed pesticides all over your food and now you got to eat it and it's maybe you want to make sure it's safe so maybe some people don't like that. And uh, that's one big problem, okay? The, the, uh, the second big problem is uh, weeds. And weeds compete with crops. And weeds actually grow in there between all the corn plants and whatever plants you got. You got to get rid of them, but because they compete with your plants, they reduce the output, they reduce the growth. And so there's some fixes, right? You could pull the weeds. That's a lot of human labor. You could use herbicides. Oh, that's not a great idea because one of those problems is you end up exposing your workers to lots of herbicides. And then you have lots of runoff into lakes, creeks, and water water areas that are out there. And, and that sounds like a... A bad idea. So, you know, there are some real problems uh, associated with how we end up dealing with the herbicides. And so let's take a look at um, all, all the alternatives. So one of the things that genetic modification has brought us is the ability to insert a gene from a toxin producing organism into corn. So what this is going to do is take a gene from a natural existing bacteria. So there is a bacteria out there called Bacillus thuringiensis, and it produces a toxin that kills insects. And right now, like early on, like as early as, gosh, back in the 70s probably, they were growing this bacteria in giant vats and just spraying the bacteria onto cornfields as a kind of pesticide. And the kind of chemicals it produces are not harmful to people. It uses pathways that humans don't use, so it's thought to be pretty safe. But, um, you know, let's go ahead and take a look at what might be a better way instead of actually putting bacteria on the corn. What if you just took out the gene? And so if you look at this, what I've got down here is this image of, of, a, uh, of a bacteria. And bacteria have circular genomes like a donut. It's still DNA just like ours. And if you know there's a toxin gene in there, wouldn't it be great if you could take that gene out and put that gene into the corn? And uh, that's exactly what they worked on doing. And they did that by in a couple of different pathways here. So um, first you have to know what the gene is in the bacteria, right? And when you find that gene in there, and that, they figured that out, and then what you do is you, you have to have a DNA sequence that's next to the gene, right? And that is like a series of 10 bases of ATC, GA, 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 G, that will tell you that is only found next to that gene. So they use that and they call that like a primer, all right? And so that's a primer that helps them find where the gene is in the bacteria. And so they take that primer and... Um, they make use of a thing called a uh, plasmid. Now, a plasmid is a little sort of accessory piece of genome. You could look at it in this image I have on the right over here. I've got this little round thing. So inside um, in the bacteria, they have these other little um, pieces of DNA that are circular, right? And they look like what I've shown you here. Like you can, if, the, if you have a piece of DNA like this, you can fold it into a circle and it cuts out the DNA and then it drifts away. Alternatively, if you have a little plasmid with a piece of DNA, it's like joining a circle of people that are holding hands. A little the thing floats in here, has a sticky part, and it opens up the DNA and then inserts itself into the genome. So what you have in organisms, like in corn particularly, like in plants, you have these little plasmids moving around out there. And they move around pieces of the genome, and they're basically these circular, I mean, they are like a little round, they look like this round thing, right? 
and they carry a few genes on them that they'll, they'll snip in and out of the genome and move to other parts of the genome. And uh, anyway, the short story is here, they make use of these plasmids to try to get in and cut out that toxin gene. And the way it has been historically done is you basically take thousands and thousands of these plasmids, right? These little plasmids, and you get thousands of them. And you pretty much smash them onto bacteria, right? Plasmids, and you smash them onto the bacteria. And there's thousands of bacteria, right? Maybe even millions. And then as a result, some of these little plasmids will pick up the gene of interest out of this bacteria and then they'll get into the plasmid. And so that's the position you want to be in, which is like a little plasmid, it has the toxin gene in it. And then if you can identify which ones those are, you can take them out and insert them into a corn plant, right? And then the little plasmid does its trick by getting up next to the genome and then in folding itself into the genome right there. And so now you've inserted back, basically what you got is a plasmid, which is a circuit of DNA with a bacterial toxin gene. I know I just skipped over a bunch of that, but I, you know, there's a little more detail in your textbook chapter if you want to read about it in there. There's a little bit more detail in my written lecture. The important thing is that we got this gene into the corn, and now when the corn begins from its zygote, right, it starts replicating. It makes two cells, four cells, eight cells, and then it makes a corn plant, right? And that corn plant in every single one of its cells, it has that gene, right? So that gene expresses toxin in every cell. So when the caterpillars bite in, they get toxin no matter what they bite, okay? This is called a transgenic crop because we've moved an organism's gene from one organism to another. They didn't have to invent any genes to do this. We just took a bacterial gene and put it into a corn plant. Um, well, so I've got this kind of written over again down here, and we can take a look. Basically, you get those gene sections, the primers, blah, blah, blah. What's important about this is now we've gone back to some of these problems. Let's look, let's look back here. How does this fix some of these problems? Well, in one problem, we go back to the problem of spraying pesticides, right? What we've done here is we've, we have no more runoff into streams, and we, don't have, we have no more workers exposed. So what you've done is put the gene inside the plant, so you have to use a lot less of it, really. You don't have to spray pesticides out of airplanes on the plants anymore, and everybody is helped by that. The workers who are working, the people who are eating the corn, and the people that are actually in the rivers and streams that run off. Um, some people have asked in class, gosh, are these things, um, is, this a, is this toxic to human? And there's no evidence that it's toxic to human. This gene seems really pretty safe. There's a potential it could have an allergic response in some people, but, you know, um, none have been identified as near as I can find in the literature. There just isn't a whole lot of bad stuff for humans in this particular gene. Let's try the next story here. So the next story is, is dealing with how can we get rid of those weeds? And this is where other company like Monsanto is one of these companies made a thing called Roundup Ready Corn. So they have an herbicide, right, that kills a lot of plants. Uh, the, and it's called Roundup, right? You can buy it over at the store. And what they would like to do is insert a gene into plants that protects the plant from the Roundup. So when you spray the field, only non-corn plants will die. Um, that sounds like a great plan for them, and they did it, and it worked really well. So essentially, they took this anti-Roundup uh, Ready, they called it, Roundup Ready, which means this plant will now tolerate herbicide. Okay, and uh, it tolerates herbicide, and so now you can spread your whole field with herbicide, and only the weeds will die. So this has some pros and some cons. One big con is that it creates a lot of herbicide in the food chain. And one thing I might say about that is that um, 
Let's go back to our list up here. So we fixed the pulling the weeds part. Don't have to do that. Uh, we don't have to spray herbicides. We don't have to do that. We don't have worker exposure. We fix that. We don't have runoff. We fix that. Um, I think we, they fixed a lot of things by doing this. What am I talking about? Did we fix any of these things? Let's look again. We don't have to pull weeds. But what about spraying herbicides? Sounds like I'm just talking out of my hat here. Uh, it's still a problem. So now, what's going on now is they're spraying more herbicides than ever because you can just dump it on there. Um, worker exposure, that's not fixed. Nope. Still a problem, even more of a problem. And the other question is now we've got lots of Roundup in the food chain. And that means that in all of us, you can get low level measurements of Roundup herbicide in almost all the products you eat, lots of people everywhere. And in small doses, it doesn't appear to be very dangerous. But even now, the FDA is still reviewing this. It's a very controversial topic because there's some suggestion that that herbicide, the herbicide, not the genetic modification, but the herbicide they're using in mass quantities may be a carcinogen. That means it may cause some kinds of cancer. But that is a big debate right now, and it requires some big data, and there's a lot of controversy, but this is something we'll be watching for in the coming time. Meanwhile, it seems that low doses aren't a big deal, but some people are getting a lot higher doses than others. So that is the story of genetically modified organisms. Anytime you move a gene from one organism into another, it's genetically modified.